Hey guys, we are live and we are doing a sneaky stream and I'm really excited because I've got my Chimera paints in the mail and so I wanted to do an unboxing. I've not even opened these yet, so you guys get to see and ask questions and we're gonna test them out and try them out just like I did with the Scale 75 paints. Now you guys know I'm not sponsored at all by Chimera or by Pegaso, so this is, you know, this is it. So here we go. Hey, sneaky sneak. Iron Axe, thank you so much. Lamunas, Kazaya, hello, everybody. Okay, so let's get going. Let's open this up. I've got my overhead here. I took off my little address. It just had my P.O. box, so it's not too big a deal, but I thought I would open this here. 
So I cannot remember exactly how many euro I paid for these, but I got the whole set. And they came pretty quick. So there was a pre-order, basically. That's how I found out. And maybe it'll even say in here how much I paid. 62 euro and 36 cents. So I'm guessing that even includes my, um, I love getting paper from foreign countries. This is so cool. Is it Italian? It is Italian. I'm gonna have to look at this later. Awesome. So, ooh, and of course the beautiful Chimera packaging. Their models come in these same boxes. So that's gorgeous. All right, here we go. Chimera, pure pigment acrylics. Made every, make every color in your mind. Okay, so these are the names. The white, <laughs> carbon black, the red, orange, warm yellow, cold yellow, yellow oxide, red oxide, phthalo blue, red shade, phthalo blue, green shade, phthalo green. Violet, magenta, satin, meat. Oh, a satin medium. I might be able to use that with my um, with my um, scale artist acrylics because they're super matte. All right, hey Rumble, how are you? Sig Wolf, you know I think they make handles for those. Yes, but I just had to have I had this uh, handy. One small point: the paint squirts out a lot faster than the scale Vallejo bottles. In your experience, just be careful. Okay. Good, they do have nice packages. So, do they happen to say what pigments they're using for red and yellows? Um, not on the outside of the box. We'll look inside and see what happens. There are several options. I do know that, um, you know, the fact that they're saying phthalo and, and red oxide and stuff, that, that gives you a hint of what they're using. Not necessarily, though. All right, we're gonna carefully Trim the plastic. Oh, Fossey81, thank you for the subscription with your Twitch Prime. I gotta write, we well, gotta stop and write names down because I did not expect to get subscribers on my off day. And um, I've told you guys before, um, all your subscriptions really help me. They help keep me going. Subscriber, did I spell it right? Fossey. Like I said, I don't do tons of giveaways or, you know, crazy things. So, you know, that's how I know you guys really, you really mean it, right? Cause, uh, <laughs> you like sneaky streams? Oh, good. All right, I'm getting my plastic off here. Nice, high quality plastic wrap. Oh, I just found another seal on here. These are, these are sealed tight. I think this is good though, cause it means customs can't mess with your stuff. Well, they might anyway, but I, mine obviously did not get messed with. All right, I'm gonna trim this and this. You give us valuable hard-earned lessons. Oh, thank you. You got your chimeras last weekend and you're taking them for a spin? All right, so here we go. I'm gonna set this box down here. Chimera colors, pure pigment, pure pigments, acrylics. Ooh, okay. So there's a mix example, which is nice. Halo green, the red, the orange, the white. So this is like, this is very nice, a little color chart. I was gonna actually make one of these, but it looks like you don't, okay, so this is carbon black, the orange, the white. This is really handy, um, at some point, I'm going to make a color chart for you guys. This is really awesome. So each 30 millimeter dropper bot pot of Chimera is made with pure, pristine, high quality pigment in a very high concentration, ranging from 30 to 50%. Most of us don't know what that means. I, I, I assume it's high and it doesn't have a lot of medium. That's what it means. Hello, Richard. Richard and 11 T, I think that's what it says. So then it says, um, oh, because a lot, yeah. So real quick, I wanna tell you, um, the Reaper, I have a bunch of Reaper paints over on the wall over here. They are made with a base of um, house paint, like uh, Sherman, Sher, Sherwin Williams house paint. Cause I went, to the, I went to the factory and actually saw giant bats of it and stuff. And so they say here, 
Um, for that reason, these colors react in a different way than we normally use. Miniature paints are usually a blend of two or more pigments. In, a particular, in particular, they often have some white mixed in, and these conditions cause the colors to go a bit gray when mixed. That's a really good point. So these are probably just a lot more pure, and they don't have extra colors. Instead, white is the most important color to create the different tones using pure pigments. So that is something I wanted to mention about the Artist Acrylics for Scale 75. Remember how I said that it, whenever you have um, an artist set, you want like an extra big tube of white, and it's for exactly this reason. Sneaky Stream, yes, Lake Crasher. I'm doing good. So I wanted to do this video so that I could tell you guys about these paints. I haven't used them, I don't know much about them. Just what other people have said, let's see. You can mix them without getting gray and muddy and you can add white for more opacity and luminosity. Our suggestion to work with chimera colors, chimera colors is to not use them directly from the pot but to consider them as the best tool you can have to create every tone that's, uh, that's in your mind. Try mixing them with just a little bit of white. You'll see the color will change slowly in a very direct and clever way. In their pure form, they are very saturated and powerful, almost like an ink, but with a matte finish. But if you need them a bit glossy, you can add just a little drop of the satin medium included in the box. Okay, good, okay. Oh, they, well, I thought that the white was gonna be bigger, but it's not, it's just the same size. And the satin medium is also the same size as, ooh, they're kind of cold. Same size as the, uh, the others. I like the size. Let's see, there are 13 pigments um, selected in a scientific way to be the best amount of pigments that create every color. Your imagination, feel, and skill will be the only limit. But this is not the end. We know how important it is for a painter to use different brands of colors for very different reasons. We encourage you to keep doing it. Just try to add chimera colors in the mix or try to use them diluted for super vibrant glaze. We want to give you the box of opportunities. So let me do this overhead again so you can see this paper. So it's got a color chart, carbon black and the white, and then it's sort of got a mix variant here. And then it has the magenta, the red, and this is what happens when you add white to these colors. Oh, I love that red oxide. I'm gonna be using the heck out of that color. Love it. And this is what happens when you add, this is pure. These are the pure colors. And there's um, white, the yellow is not showing up super well on my camera, there we go. And this is when you add a little bit of black. Notice the yellow goes a little green when you, it goes a little ochre when you add a little black. So they, they, do, they look pretty good so far. Let's see what it says back here. Tested by great artists. Ben Kormitz, Fabrizio Russo, Massimiliano, Ricciero, I think I'm saying these names right. Danilo, I don't know some of these people. I'm gonna say the names I know, and forgive me if you're one of those artists that watches this. Um, haha, I don't know most of these people. Ricardo Agostini, I'm taking a class from him at Adepticon. Um, Matt DiPietro, he's I think the only American on this whole list. Kirill Kanaev, he's from Russia, I've taken classes from him. Let's see, Matt Sexwish, he's from Germany, Alfonso Hirales, and Matt, Matteo Di Diomare, I don't know if I said that wrong. The original idea, Alfonso, Pietro, Luca, Art Direction, Francesco Ferrari, and Alessandro Camarini. Okay, let's get these out. Great, where's show she's, they did not, they did not, they did not, um, they did not approach me. Maybe, you know, I don't, so the thing about, you know, this business is it's who you know, it really is. So that's, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know a lot of those people, so maybe that's why. <laughs> you can't fathom why Vallejo, who make good artist acrylics, refuses to do single pigment colors. That's a good question. I don't know. All right, here is, this is the first, this is the acrylic satin medium. It says, acrylic water resin, valid for brush and airbrush, shake well before use, non-toxic, non-flammable, do not heat. 
Okay. All right, good. Made in Italy. Ooh, did you hear that? They already have a little mixer inside. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. They're thinking ahead. That's great. I think that paints that need this kind of thing should come with these. <laughs> All right, let's 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 put these on our palette. I hope I let's see if I have to take a, a seal off. I do not have to take a seal off. Okay. It's because I forgot to put show she sent me in the comments when you bought it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're seeing, I didn't even, I opened this first, maybe they tested it and it got a little, every, somebody told me to just, I'm just letting it pour out. I'm not squeezing it. Okay, there we go. That's the, what's it called? The black, is it called the black? PBK7. I think that's the black carbon black there's a, it's on the side 30 milliliters of paint that's a good amount let's see how much is in these does it even say 20 milliliters okay so the scale color have 20 and these have 30 that's interesting these are a lot thinner these are a lot more like a regular miniature paint whereas the oh I like this I like this the scale color are a little bit more like um, like a real heavy body acrylic. Yeah, I'm being all sneaky. All right, here's green. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. Oh my gosh, guys! I don't know if you're gonna get this on camera. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play with these. I've got a, a pad of paper here. All right, this one is phthalo blue. This first one was phthalo green. Okay. Quick paint something. I'm getting the paints out. <laughs> All right. Oh, that one seems like it's a little thicker than the others. Let me get a paper towel. One thing, these might be, might be more difficult for me because I'm a messy person. Those might be a little more difficult to keep clean in some instances. Here's the white. The white, it actually says the white. Can you see that? Stop making you wanna buy things. <laughs> hey, I'm buying them so that you don't have to or that you can check it out first and see if you want it. Okay. Now I already got, see I already got paint on stuff. That's funny. All right, that's, that's the white. I put it down on the bottom of my palette. This one is phthalo blue red shade. That means it's a blue with a little bit more red in it. Okay. You really don't need to squeeze them at first because they're, they're pretty full and they also are pretty liquidy. Violet. I like that. Okay. Magenta. Ooh, that's a beautiful magenta. You need a really good magenta to make a good purple because red red is actually a little too... Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. That's beautiful. Nice dark magenta. All right, those are my cool colors. And here are my warm colors. We've got red oxide somewhere over the chimera rainbow. <laughs> oh, the red is super thick. Okay. Well, it, it came right out. Came right out. They do. So that's the thing about pigment colors is they're going to have different consistencies. Maybe it was this red you're talking about. The red. Okay, this is the red. Warning, it's super thick. Okay. You missed the intros to these paints. Were they promotional or did you end up, I bought them. They, I wish they were promotional. I wish somebody sent me these because I would hype them. But now we're gonna, we're gonna get the truth. That's okay, you get the truth either way. Whether somebody's promote, promote, sending me a promotional or not, 
I always tell them, oh, this is beautiful. This is a nice orange. That's great. All right, so then here's my satin medium. I guess I'll put some of that in my little dish here. Just a drop. Wait, that is really white. You can't see that, can you? It's very, like, opaque. So I'm interested in seeing how that works. This is the ye oh, yellow oxide. It's kind of like an ochre. Chimera is showing them out of stock. That's because they've been doing, um, what are they called? Pre-orders. And that's something that may bite them in the butt a little bit because they, they have to do these like batches. So get in on a pre-order if you want them. Tiny Tusk, I'm super happy with my Chimera colors. Ooh, that's a gorgeous yellow. I hope that that, that is, um, let's see what color that is. Well, I wasted a bunch of paint on my paper towel. Warm yellow, and then this one is probably the cold, cold yellow. Well, just take a look. So not all yellows are created equal. Cold yellow, warm yellow. Keep in mind when you're painting, some, some yellows aren't gonna work with what you're doing because you're using the wrong yellow. There we go. All right, that's all of them. They're doing another pre-order in April. And there's the lovely Chimera box. I love that, that, that can just sit in my studio and I don't have to get a whole thingamabob for it. All right, are we ready? Let me get out this pad. I wanna show you this. I made this at a class and we did white and then, sorry, here's the, yeah, white and dark. So we started in the middle with this color, right? And then we added red, a little bit of red to each side and then a little bit of green to this side. So I'm gonna do something a little bit similar. Let me see if I can find a blank page. All right, this is too white. Give me one second. So I'm not blinding you guys. I'm gonna go, go switch my camera real quick. All right, here we go. This is much better. You can see it's not blinding you guys as much. All right, so let's take the black and see. We're gonna just paint a little. Wow, okay. Very, they are very pigmented. Very pigmented. And then, then I'm gonna thin it out a little bit on here so you can get, you can see little tiny pieces of the pigment which that's cool, that's neat. All right, so that's the black. Here is the phthalo green. I need another paper towel out. You have all the sets from scale, awesome. This is the phthalo green, ooh, that's pretty. These remind me a lot of my watercolors. Look at that, that's beautiful. You definitely probably would not want to use these straight. You, you do want to mix these because they are just so, so pure. Oh my God. Look at that beautiful phthalo blue. And I think that's the phthalo blue red. No, nope, that's the phthalo blue green, I think. Look at how beautiful. And then here is the, this is the phthalo red. It's a little bit, a little bit different. Very similar. I can't quite tell the difference. They're just slightly different. Phthalo blue green is such a pretty color, it is. All right, this is the violet. Ugh, lovey, love it. Oh my goodness. That's pretty. Hello, Amberden. You got a sneaky stream today. We're showing off the chimera colors. Oh my goodness. That's like a process magenta. 
That is like pow in your face. But look at how they glaze. They glaze like a dream. And then this is the red oxide. Ooh, that's like Indian red. And if you ever do watercolors, this is just like Indian red. You can tell that actual fine artists put these colors together. This is like a, oh, this is kind of like a cadmium red. Okay. Okay, I like it. All right. I like that they're non-toxic. This is the orange. I think I'm gonna really like that. Oh yes, I do like that orange. Very pretty. And I've got a little dirty water, so but look at how pigmented that is. You have moments in de desperation, broken out your watercolor phthalo blue and mixed it with Vallejo glaze medium to get the color you want. Yeah, that's a great idea. So this ochre, this is like the um, yellow oxide. Oh, that's beautiful, oh my God. It's so beautiful. Do a thick amount of it and then have the glaze down here. Okay, and now the warm yellow, oof. Beautiful. And then this is the cold yellow. Oof. The yellows are transparent. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Mikolai's, Mikolai's V11. Thank you for that subscription, four months. I am having a good day. All right, um, let me go ahead and put your name down, Nicholas. Hold on a second. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. There you go, thank you. Mad love. Makes you really happy with the Chimera, a little fact that they are not afraid to show what pigment they used is um, is pure pigments is so there is nothing to hide so they they did show what what the pigments are or they haven't it makes me really happy with Camary the little fact that they are not afraid to show what pigment they used is pure pigments oh I get you I get you yeah because these are the these are the pigments red oxide boom that's it um, do I have any black let me see here, I don't have black, but I do have my, here, I'm gonna show you guys on this. This is for the white, and we're gonna see how, see if it covers completely. Okay, it doesn't. It's about, it's about here. I'd say it's between a light and a medium, because I can still see underneath it, right? Just shows you how, how, um, how pigmented it is, the white. So the white is a tiny bit transparent. But again, the white is mostly made for mixing. Let's see what happens when I mix a little. Ooh, that's pretty. That's with just a little white. Okay. No cadmiums, exactly. Yeah, they do show it. Okay, good. PR170. Oh, naphthal as red, yes. Yeah, they do show it on the bottles. They show it PRs. They are. Are the colors settling down on the paper? Notice that this one has a lot more pigment in it. I mean, it's like, this is what happens when you have pure pigments. You have kind of this uh, sedimentation. And this, see how this one is not sedimentary? Some pigments that are made with earth, like an oxide, they're gonna have sedimentary colors and they're gonna react differently so like these yellows are transparent colors so they are gonna react differently than a sedimentary color that's something that you learn with artists acrylics or artists watercolors red oxide settles more than the diol yellow yeah exactly because one's transparent one's not they're not created equal exactly so let's do some mixing over here on the side. Let's do, I'm gonna put a little water down. I'm gonna put a little bit of the 
phthalo here, and I'll put a little of my yellow on this side. Let's do the warm yellow and see what happens. This is the warm yellow. Mix it in the middle. Okay, good. Let's see what we, when we mix it concentrated, what happens. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, get a very strong green. That's a nice green. Okay, so these paints, because they're so few, I would absolutely make a color chart with these. Let me see. I do have a piece of paper down here. Let's let's go ahead and make a color chart. All right. It's a little bit of a boring process, so you may not want to stick around, but if you do, that's totally cool. All right, so what I do is I start with my yellow, and I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to make a little circle of it. Then I will do my warm yellow. I'm using pure pigment for the first row. It's really good to practice mixing paints anyway, even if you don't have a set like these, because, um, there we go, that's pretty pigmented there. Even though, because, uh, you know, it teaches you about your paints, and you, you kind of begin to have a, a, like a memory, right? You get a memory. That is such a orange orange. It's like phthalo versus ultramarine for your blue. Phthalo will stay in suspension and stain the paper better than ultramarine. Yeah, exactly, which tends not to stain. Yeah, there's staining uh, pigments and then there's like, I think it's called transient where you can pick it back up. Um, maybe fugitive, I'm not sure if that's the right word. All right, here's the red, the red. I'm hoping I can get all my colors on here. Just add a dot com at the end. <laughs> Didn't Chimera cut, come with the set of mixing instructions? Um, that's not the point. The point is, is that you need to do it yourself because you, you know, might use your paint differently, right? And, uh, you need to get a feel for your paints when you first get them. And yeah, sure, you can use their mixing instructions, but you should also mix them yourself. And I'm showing you guys an exercise that I learned in college with my watercolors. They put that chart in there, so they give you um, a place to start. All right, so that's my warms. I think I'm just going to do I don't think I'm going to have enough room for all my other colors on here. So that's what I'm going to do for that. Let's see. So if I want to mix all my warms together, we're going to start with yellow, and we're going to mix yellow with warm yellow and see what happens with that. So here's yellow. That was, of course, that's you're just getting your regular color. Now there's an easier way to do this, but I can never remember how. Okay, 50-50, yellow and warm yellow, or get cold yellow and warm yellow. There we go, sort of lighter. Okay. Yay, a European, I have European streams on um, Mondays and Fridays. You can always catch me. Just happened to be a little early this time. Chimera also has a base for adding white and black to each other. If you can get permission to link it. Um, let's see, do I have Amberdin is one of my mods. If you want to send the link to him, you can you can link it. Absolutely. All right, here's 5050, the ochre color, or it's actually yellow oxide and the first yellow. There we go. That's a little more brown. Now we're gonna mix a little of that yellow here with a little bit of my orange. 
not quite 50-50. Let me add a little bit more yellow. There we go. See how we're doing? Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm glad that you're willing to stick around for something like this. It's, a, it's an interesting process. Like I said, I learned this in college and um, it's very useful. It was very useful in my art training. Okay, so here's something interesting that I'm noting. Look at how similar these two colors are. So this is red plus this yellow and I get a color that's very similar but it has yellow undertones to it, yellow nuances. So sometimes you can mix a color you already have. So red and yellow, that, those are the pure, right? Red and yellow make orange and happens to make a very similar orange to the one that we already have. I don't think that's a coincidence. There we go, there's my other yellow and now we're going to mix some of that red oxide with it. Now see, sometimes I can't get a 50-50 mix because that first yellow is really light. Ah, there we go. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. Thank you, Amber, and I appreciate that. All right, now a little bit of the magenta. Magenta is extremely powerful, so we won't need much of that. And that again makes another red color, red or orangish color. So now we have that first mix, and the second mix here is going to be our warm yellow. Okay, we already know, we already know that yellow and this already make that, so we don't need to do that again, right? So we can jump down to here, because we know that those two are the same. We already have that color mixed right there, so we can jump down to here. It saves you a lot of time that way, too. You can do 50-50, warm yellow and yellow oxide. Maybe a little bit more yellow oxide in that. There we go. Okay, pretty. That's a really pretty color. And it's it's just a little dirtier and, and got a little bit more sediment than the original color. Now, warm yellow and orange. Oop, that's probably way too much orange. When you're mixing these colors, you wanna shoot for a 50-50, but the thing is is that um, some colors dominate, so you will have to adjust. That's very pretty. That's a very pretty orange. All right. Now, we're gonna do 50-50 as much as we can. We just need a tiny amount of red because red is very pure. Red is a very dominant color. There we go. And that's similar to the first color, but look, it's a lot more warm. This is the cold yellow and this is the the warm yellow, so we're getting a more similar color, but a lot more warm. So the Big Wolf says the difference being if you mix the orange you just made with some other color versus the pure, you have very different intensities, exactly. And you can adjust those intensities however you like, which is nice. All right, a little bit of warm yellow plus the red oxide. See, I don't think I got that quite 50-50. Let me add a little bit more warm yellow to that. It's a very dominant color as well. It's a little bit more brown because it's, it's warmer, right? This is cold, this is warm. Makes you happy to see this. I've wanted to do this with my paints too. And I'm glad um, I don't seem entirely crazy for, no, definitely do it. That's what I'm, I'm showing you guys how to do this because I want you to do this with your paints. It doesn't matter whether they are these kinds of paints or your Scale 75s or your Citadel. You should do this at some point with your paints because it will. you can hang this in your studio. And then let's say, I don't have that color I need. Can I mix it? Oh, look, I have a red and I have this yellow. I can make my color with that, right? This will help you so much. Hang this in your studio.
All right, I'm presuming you have studios. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of magenta. Oh my gosh, that's such a pretty color. It's, a, it's like a really amazing sunset orange. Look at how, and it's a little, because those two colors together are very transparent. So you get a more transparent orange. Whereas this color and this are more sedimentary. Sedimentary plus transparent equals more sedimentary, right? You got a refrigerator box with central air? Awesome. <laughs> okay, so now we're done with that color. Now we're gonna do the oxide up here. I wanna do these with my scale colors also, but I'm waiting for the full set to come. All right, so that we've already done. We've already done those two, right? So now we can jump down to the orange. You're gonna make like, it's gonna be like a little triangle grid, right? So you're not having to mix twice. So, yep, that's gonna go half here and then orange. I need more oxide. These are both, ooh, they interact interestingly. They're kind of, One's sedimentary and one's, well, they kind of both are, but look at it, it's a little bit more brown and muddy. And that's probably because this yellow is more of a tertiary yellow, because it has like probably a little bit of blue in it. All right, now we're gonna do the ochre. I wanna call it ochre, but it's yellow oxide. Yellow oxide here. And we're gonna add a smidge of the red. Don't need a lot because it's so dominating. There we go. That's pretty. We finally caught a stream. Oh, I'm so glad that you like them. You can, um, Elu, you can do the same kind of chart with your the paints that you guys just got. Um, it's really helpful. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of this. Lou and George won. Oh, Talagar, thank you so much. I didn't expect that. It's a sneaky stream. Um. <laughs> All right, a little bit of this and a little bit of the red oxide. Oh, that's rich. I like that. It's a very buttery consistency on there. Okay. Now the magenta and the... This is going to be interesting because this is so... Transpa or not transparent, opaque for a yellow. It's, a, it's an opaque yellow. And then there's, oh, that's pretty. I'm loving, so far my favorite color of all of the warms is the magenta, even though it's more of a cold. But I love how it mixes with the other warm colors. You're planning on learning to use the paints that you have and investing in more acrylics? You Yeah, and I, that's why I'm saying you can still make a chart like this with your current um current paints um kras madsky we're we're basically making this chart so we can see how all of our warm colors from chimera these are the colors that we have here aren't they beautiful look at this how they mix with each other and how you can make a paint chart with your existing paints that will really help you later on when you're learning to mix because you develop a mixing library in your head. And the more you do this sort of thing with new paints, the better you learn them. It's really important. Okay, so we're done with the ochre. Now, see, it gets smaller and smaller, so we need less and less colors. So now we need the orange. Here's the orange up here. Beautiful, very vivid. All right, a little bit of orange, we're gonna drop down to here where it's just orange and red. So we know what those colors mixed together already make. Okay, and a little bit of pure red here. Really, holy cow, vivid, vivid. It's, it's just doesn't, it's like exactly in the middle of both. Really vivid. Guten Abend. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, gluten abend. 
Hi. <laughs> what paint is this? This is the Chimera paints. Everybody's showing up late. Um, so, I'm sorry, I had a sneaky stream, so I didn't tell anybody I was gonna do this. We got, I got my Chimera paints in the mail, and so we're testing them out. We're making a painting chart with them because there's very few pigments, which is perfect to make a, a beginner painting chart. Okay, so now we're doing orange and the oxide. We're trying to mix a little 50-50 to see what happens here. Here's the oxide. Ooh, I like that. So it's almost just like we're tinting each color slightly different. And the last but not least is my favorite, the magenta. I almost got the oxide yellow. Here's the orange. And a little magenta. Oh, oh, I love that. That's beautiful. I got water everywhere. Okay. Now, we've only got oh, one color left. I did have a model. I just dropped it on the floor. I'm going to show you on the model next. So we've got one color left. We've got our red and then our magenta is last. But as you can see, we'll have mixed everything with the magenta by the time we get to the end. So we only need to do this last little red. So we'll drop down to here and we'll mix red, the red, with oxide red. Mmm, that's beautiful. See how that's almost like a warm brick blood red almost? Lugbaum, how are you? No, these aren't quite heavy body. I would say they're the same as um, regular miniature paints in, in uh, consistency. Illuminati confirmed. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Build your mind palace of pretty colors. Exactly. All right, and the last is the red. A little bit of red and a little bit of magenta. Ooh, lovely. Okay, so there we've got our warm colors. You can see that. You don't even really need that, those colors here. I just put them there to, to remind me, right? So there we have our chart. Now what we could do is we could do our cool colors on the other side, or we could do, I could do a bigger chart and I could show it to you. You know what, I will probably go to the store and buy some, um, some board, some illustration board, so I can make a bigger chart. Now then, here's another thing you can do. You can do um, different things on your, you go online and Google color chart, because you can do, you can do opaque, Look at this. You can do a little half of your circle can be opaque. Let's try this. I don't know if I can make this work. Magenta is already transparent. All right, so half is opaque, and then the other half can be transparent. So you can have both of those on your circle, right? So you know what a glaze looks like. Oh, it was related to something else? Yeah, the, the magenta is my favorite. I really do like it. So that's how, you, that's how I make a color chart. Now we're gonna paint something on a model. Let me go grab this model on the floor here. That's the last trick, is to see how it behaves on a resin model. Hopefully this didn't break. Um, yes, it did break. Dang it, let me look for the sword. I might have to sculpt another one. Or dig for it. All right, it's not not to be found. That's okay. I got this model from Cool Mini or not. And let me do some more stick tack. Are you going to do a cold? Do you guys want to see? Okay, raise. Show me. Show me some emotes if you want to see the cold color chart. Because I'll do a cold color chart as well. I want to make sure that I have your, you know, your interest. I don't want to lose people. I want to see lots of emotes from everybody who's interested. Otherwise, I want to paint on the model. Okay, there's some emotes. Yes, dog, slug bomb. I know you want to see it. <laughs> Rubbish booty, good. Okay. All right, we're well, seeing lots of emotes. 
good, good, good. All right, let's do the cold chart because I want to see them too, right? All right, so this is, find a good piece of paper. Good, I'm happy. Here we go. All right, cold chart. All right, I'm gonna start with where is, I'm not using the black and white at this point, because those are, those will make things light and dark, so they don't, they, they change colors a lot differently. All right, so I'm gonna start with, let's see, how many did I have before? I had one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's only a few um, cold colors, so we'll add the magenta back in so we have a, another color here. Let's do it like this. We're going to do magenta. Try to make it opaque. Does it have to be special paper? I'm using watercolor paper. I just got one of those cheap watercolor pads at the store. It's not expensive. Um, I'm gonna get some, you know, illustration board from, uh, you've been painting a lot of bears, I have. <laughs> okay, so here's the purple. This is the violet. Some of these are gonna look really dark because of the, uh, the paint is so pigmented. See that purple? And then this is the first blue. Oh my gosh, this reminds me so much of my watercolors. The violet is super dark. It's, it's, it's not reading well on camera maybe, but it is super dark. I thought, I was worried it was gonna read as black. You can use violet, by the way, instead of black. Look at that one, that one's gorgeous too. Slightly different. Yes, the, all of the colors are gorgeous. And this is the last one. This is the bright phthalo green. Okay, there's the cold one. And that's it. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five. Let's put. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here we go. So now we're gonna do this color plus this color. Right? A little bit of a little bit of violet, be real. Oops, see that's too much. Some of the some of the colors will overpower, so you have to not there we go, that's perfect. That's a good 50-50 mix of those two. And now 50-50 um, blue and violet, or blue and magenta. Just use a tiny bit. See, that made a purple, but look at the difference between this and the regular violet. Very similar to the Blue and magenta make purple, but it's a slightly different purple, right? This does look like a dark blue on camera, but it, it doesn't to my eyes. It looks like a dark, dark purple. Okay, second blue. Put that down there and a little bit of magenta. That also made a purple, but it's way more, because this is the, this is the, um, Phthalo red, right? So it's got, I think, or maybe one one of these is the red. It has a little bit more of a red tone in it. One of them has more of a green tone. I think that might actually be the phthalo green. But it, they're slightly, they're very similar. Damn purples, exactly. Now here, we already, we have the magenta. Let's see what happens when you mix magenta and green. I bet you guys don't think about this as a, as a mix. It makes amazing, amazing turquoise color. Have you ever mixed? Well, wait. Nope, it made a purple. Wow. 
I've, I've had it, but look, it has some green tones to it. That's with a little bit, I'm gonna mix this again. Let's do it down here. Let's do more green and just a tiny bit of, tiny bit of magenta. There we go, there's that turquoise I was talking about. So a tiny bit of magenta and a little bit of phthalo green make a turquoise. More magenta and phthalo green make a purple. That's cool to know. Let me see if I can do that again. There we go. I like that. All right, now we're gonna do, so we, now we jumped over to the purple. Purple, we're gonna jump down to here. Violet. Violet is so powerful, you don't need much. And then a little bit of the phthalo. Let's try. That's gorgeous, that blue. It's just the most beautiful, like ultramarine blue. So pigmented. Now a little bit of the violet plus a little bit of the Phthalo green, phthalo green hue, it's phthalo blue green. That's it. And then a little bit of purple in there. I'm doing my best to get these close to 50 50. They're similar. There's just a slight difference, right? I think that actually might be the red. I might be mixing those up. Color porn, <laughs> exactly. That crimson to the left looks opaque. Yeah, I tried to make that. It's not crimson, it's magenta. And here's what it looks like when it's not opaque. I tried to make it opaque for a reason. Here's what it looks like when it's transparent. Isn't that amazing? So you can note, you can play with the transparency of the colors as well to get vibrancy. Now it's picking up the vibrancy because of the white underneath. So if you, in order to get that color, you're gonna have to paint over something that's white. In order to get a different color, you're gonna have to paint over the, you know, something that's dark, right? Think about that when you're using stuff. That's why people paint with the, with the zenithal highlighting so much is so they can get those effects. All right, so let's do, so we got the green and the last, the first blue a little bit. And a little tiny bit of green. And a little bit of blue, let me do that back up. There we go. That's, oh, lush, lush turquoise. That's blue and green together. All right, now, now we bump over here to this blue, so we already know that blue. So then I think, did I miss something? I did, yep. Yeah. So we gotta mix the two blues together, which it's gonna be pretty, I mean, you're not really gonna have too big a difference. Right? Pretty similar. The more colors you have, the more of an array you're gonna get. And then the last is the blue and the red one. So that and this one. Slightly different, just because I added more pigment, right? Subtle. Now I'm, I'm just I'm now I'm wanting to do complementaries. I'm just really curious of what complementary colors look like together. So what? Red and green. So let's do red and green together. Okay, I'm curious. Can't you make that color by adding white paint to the magenta? That's a good question. Let's try it, because I bet you you can't. Not, it, I mean, it'll be different. It'll be opaque. So here's the magenta, and here's the white. So you can make it, but look, it goes opaque on you. It doesn't have that transparency. 
So, but you might want that. If you're painting on something black, you might want to add a little bit of black to make that. And, but well, here's the nice thing. So, because normally when you add a magenta or some, one of these other magentas from another line that doesn't have as much pigment, you don't get this intense tinted color like that. It gets muddy, like they say. So that's a good point. Thank you for that, Slag Bomb. All right, we're going to mix the red and the green together now to in the middle here. I'm just curious what happens. Just a little bit. Ooh, you get this really interesting mud. Dark, almost like a black. I like it. A little bit more red. It's a really dark gray. Let's see what happens when I add just a smidge of white to it. Yeah, it's definitely a gray. Pretty gray. You can tell because of the way it grays out, it's got a little bit more green in it than red. Yeah, you get the same color, but it's different, right? All right, so what happens when I mix blue with orange? That is such a brilliant orange. We're gonna get another gray because these are these are tertiary these are two complementary colors make a tertiary color. Okay, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Oop, need more red orange. It's a dark gray too. They're all pretty similar. That one's obviously darker. This is the blue. That's nice, I like that. I was expecting more browns, it was. There's a little white at the bottom. You can see how that looks compared. You're gonna get slightly different grays each for each one. Now let's see, purple and yellow. Let's do the light yellow. It's gonna be, I need to put some more on my palette. I'm really interested in seeing how these work with my other paints as well, because that's one thing I like about the Scale series is that they were super compatible with, um, with my other colors. Now, with purple and brown, I should get, I should get a more like, um, hopefully a more brown color, because I'm expecting that. All right, a little yellow here. There we go, I've already got purple in my brush. See, and it is more, it is still gray, but it's, it's a more pooey, pooey gray, poo gray. That, that's kind of what I was expecting with the greens. Interesting. You get puce. <laughs> Let's do a little white at the bottom of that one too. That's pretty. I like that. Makes a nice beige. A very nice beige. Poo gray is Mr. Handy the Christmas poo, yes. <laughs> All right, let's paint on the model now. I'm curious to see what happens. All right, here's my reference. Um, let's see here. Let's do his do his face. And I'm going to use some of that poo gray that I made because I think that'll work pretty nice actually. I'm going to mix some of that with some of this ochre and a little bit of this yellow. A little white. There we go. That's beautiful. 8-Bit Barbells, thank you for the follow. So you see this beautiful, very grayed out, desaturated, it's like a purpley color. We're gonna put that on him and then we're gonna paint him 
with the highlights, see how they work on top. See how well they layer. So far, I'm liking it. I'm holding it down here, so let me go ahead and adjust my camera real quick so you can, so it's, it's made for miniature painting. Do I like Vallejo paints? I do like Vallejo paints. These are Chimera paints. I'll be right back. Okay, now we can try to paint some. Oh, perfect. Good, good, good. Anybody have any questions while I was stepped away? Focus. I'm focusing. All right. So this is that purple that I, I told you I've got mixed all. It's sort of like a, it's, I mixed the yellow and the uh, purple together to get this and a little white to get this beige color. So this, this particular type of paint is a little bit trickier to teach on, on stream. And you can see why, it's because I'm gonna say, I use a little bit of this, I use a little bit of that, but it's gonna be a lot more eyeballing. You're gonna have to teach yourself that color library in order to like, follow along. That's why um, these paints are great for self-teaching yourself how to mix colors, but it's a little, see, you can see I'm mixing the little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow. There we go. A little tiny bit of this for opaqueness. There we go. And now I know when I get that right mix, then to add the white to, okay, now see it's more yellow. You just have to go back and forth. That's the thing about acrylics. You'll never mix that same color twice, but it's gonna be so much more artsy. That's why I think a wet palette's gonna be very handy. This paint set is not going to necessarily be for armies. I mean, you're gonna drive yourself nuts trying to paint an army with this paint set. It's not, that's not what it's for. There we go, I love those colors on him and I love how it's behaving on the model. It's just not covering up any details, very pigmented, I mean, looks good. All right, I'm letting that dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna slowly add in a little bit more white, a little bit more white. I can, these, these paints are awesome for wet blending, I can tell you that right now. And you guys know I like to wet blend. I think they would also be great for airbrushing.
They're gonna need to come out with a big bottle of white, though. I'll tell you that right now. I know this. I think that scale needs to do the same thing. Do I want to stretch? Yeah, let me go ahead and do a quick stretch. What do you think would happen if you use drying retarder to saturate the sponge? Good question. I don't think I'd do that. Um, I would rather use drying retarder with my pen, with my watercolor pen. And um, the, sun, the sponge is pretty saturated as it is. I honestly don't think it's too necessary. Look at how smooth this is. It's just blending like a dream. I'm just bringing up the highlights, just wet blending them in. I can go back in here to the darker colors again if I need to smooth out a line. This is going to be a lot more like canvas painting, which I already kind of paint like this. Now let's add some pure white right on the top here. My glasses are off, so if you want to get my attention, do add show she's minis. I like this so far. Yeah, I I would put this right up there with the scale colors. I I'm I'm happy with my purchase. Sixty three euro and a little change. Pretty good. I'm pretty happy. I'm just sketching on him right now. I want to see what happens as I'm bringing up his white face. Now, let's do a little bit of purple, um, a little bit of phthalo blue, there we go, phthalo, or phthalo green rather, tiny bit of black, there we go, and That. That's a little bit, I need to add a little bit more black to that because it's pretty green still on his face. Just covered it with black. <laughs> That's okay. He's a panda. that so far. Let's do ultimately it's an acrylic. You'd imagine they should be fun. Yeah, exactly. The mini is slightly out of focus. I have to hold it down here in order for it to be focused. Sorry about that.
Oh, I like that. I like the black and then the gray on top with him. Black has really good coverage. And a little bit of this gray, like that. All right, now I'm going to give him his eyeballs so he looks a little bit more alive. And I'm noticing, like, so I'd obviously need to go back in and work out the rough parts because there's there needs to be more blending. That's much better, much softer. That's why, like I said, I was sketching. You sketch, pull in the details. Of this color. Let me look at my reference real quick here. Okay. Okay. Smooth out some of the over here. Pretty rough. It dries. It dries a little bit. Hmm, how do I say it? It's like um, kind of got to watch it. Like watch it as it dries because it's drying a little chunky and I have to go back and smooth stuff a little bit. That's pretty typical of what of uh that's pretty typical. Lighter colors can get chalky on you. Let's do a little bit of this. See what happens if, when I use that. This is drying retarder. 50-50 drying retarder, 50-50 um 50 /50 water. And that will hopefully Woo! My brush. <laughs> Hopefully that will help me keep from things getting so chalky. Okay, and let me do the other eye. Second, I will check chat. I feel like I messed up his eye. Give me a second here. Fix it, fix it. There we go. Let's do a little bit of blue, a little bit of that, a little bit of white. His, his eyes so wide open now. Okay. Does cover mistakes really well. I do like that. So if I want to make this eyelid coming down a little bit more with my black and my gray. Not bad. Hi, 
Hi, Bad Blood Boss, you're at work? Okay, no problem. Don't mind lurkings. Do a little bit of this brown. There we go. Get you a little nose. I'm looking forward to painting um, some models with this paint. You're gonna see a little bit of a vibrance in my palette, which I already, I already really like a vibrant palette, so it's cute as heck. Oh my gosh. This model, I can't get enough. It's awesome. Cute. Oh. Let's see, do you have any sort of eyebrow flare you just had? A little bit up here. Building that white back up again is a little bit tricky. There's a little blue in there. But actually, I like that. The white picks up every little color. Okay. A smidge of a little reflection here. What a cutie. That's okay, Cajun Mage. I'm gonna put this online so everybody can see. Pretty um, stoked about these paints. Let's do a little color. This whole belly is this like gorgeous magenta and I think I can actually use this mostly pure. You can see me glaze. Holy cow, that's pretty. Oh my God. Bam. But damn. That's the pure magenta on top of the zenithal. And I mean, thing. And he's got sticky tack on his booty. Let's do this side. And you guys know I love my saturated colors. They'll say, don't use it straight out of the bottle. And I'll be like, whatever. I'll do what I want. I like it a lot. Pretty. Oh no! I can cover that. That's a question I can get answered now. See? Can I cover a, a mistake like that? Yes, I can. Awesome. Look at this. Jen Haley. 
Jen Haley painted this. She's fantastic. <laughs> I really wonder what she was using for these colors because she didn't have Chimera back then. Maybe it was a fluorescent. What do you think? Magenta matches my nail polish, it does. Oh my goodness. This is funny because this nail polish is called Very Very Fun. This needs a little glitter. So let me put a little bit of this purple here. And we'll pop out some of the some of the shadows here. And it glazes like a dream. I like it. See, I'm putting that purple into the shadow and then glaze it out. That's nice. I like it. All right, let's see what happens. Like, remember we talked about using a little bit of white, a little bit of magenta? See what happens. It is a little bit opaque. That's not bad. I can come back with that and paint, um, Ooh, too much, too much purple. So you you need to, you can, yeah, I, th I do think that you probably don't want to paint with these straight out of the bottle too much, right? I'm mixing right on top of my model. Um, I actually like that. I like that a lot. Now, let's see. She used a dark purple black. Let's see what happens when I mix this. A little black, a little bit of brown. And a little bit more, more black. There we go. People say, don't dry brush. I say, use the tools and options at your disposal. Exactly. Photoshop, <laughs> yeah, right, rubbish. That's funny. If you guys haven't checked out Jen Haley's work, um, you need to because she's um, she's an American painter. She's one of the one of our if we have um, if American painters have masters, she's one of our masters, and she's just a phenomenal talent, and she's just a really cool artist as well. There we go. Okay. A little bit of purple glazing back here. See what happens. Give me a little shadow, a little purple shadow. These dry faster. These dry faster than the um, scale color, artist colors. So that's something to keep in mind. You might need a little drying dry retarder with these. But you know, for some projects, drying faster is not a, not a downside. If you're in Australia, it might be a downside. Oh, I love how they, now, if you're a glazing, it's a total not a downside because look at how fast I can glaze and get those colors in there without having to worry about waiting for stuff to dry. By the time I go touch it with my brush again, 
he's already done. A few little purple shadows in here. I wish the white were just a little bit more opaque. Just a little bit. Love him. What do you think? <laughs> oh, cool. All right, so that's just a little demo of some of the Chimera colors. I'm really happy with them. I give them an A+. I'm looking forward to using them with my scale colors. <coughs> I give my scale colors an A+, also. So um, I just wanted to... That was my little unboxing and I want to make this video relatively short. So thank you guys so much for coming. I was very impressed with how many people came last minute. And we will be painting with these some more over the next few weeks. I'm very excited. And so if you like me, follow me. If you like me a lot, subscribe. I would love to see you guys you know, as many times as you can be here. So, all right, let's look for somebody to host. We've got a nice crowd here. Definitely want to host somebody cool. Let's see. All right. All right, there we go. Here's our end music. All right, Maharoon is just starting up. We're going to host her. Love her. She's awesome. She will be surprised because I don't know. I think she saw me on, but I don't know if she knows I'm going to host her. There she is. All right, we're going to do Mad Love. If you do have my emotes, use my emotes. If you don't, I'm going to copy paste this Mad Love and you can use these in the, her chat. And so um, I will be back online tomorrow from 2.30 to 4.30. So that's my normal time and you can come back and see me and I hope that you guys join us. All right guys, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys made it. Bye bye.